Last year, I dropped a big update for Everything Presence Lite called Zone Configurator, which is a visual tool to help you visualize real-time tracking in a room, as well as draw zones. And that was a hugely popular feature that loads of people found really useful. Well, today I've got an update for you that makes that look like child play with a complete rewrite from scratch, and it takes it all the way up to 11, and I think this is the biggest feature drop so far. But it's not just Everything Presents Lite, but Everything Presents 1 too. Real quick, we are having a big Black Friday sale over on the shop. You can pick up the Everything Presents 1 or the Everything Presents Lite for the cheapest price that they have ever been, along with tons of other products from Makara and Shelly and Home Assistant over on the shop. And after you see what I've got in store for you today with this, you're gonna want to pick one up because this new update is so cool. So first, when you open up the new Everything Presence Configurator, link in the description if you don't have it installed yet, or you'll need to update to the newest version as of this video. You will get the Getting Started Wizard, which is basically going to guide you through the setting up your first device. And right away, it will discover any Everything Presence devices that you have, so go ahead and select one, and then on the next page, it will ask you to name your room, which is a hint at what's to come. And you can also switch between Imperial and Metric here, though it is possible to change later, so do not worry. On the next page, it's gonna ask you to start drawing your room outline. And basically what we are defining here are the exterior walls that you want to track in a room. And you do that just by clicking on the canvas and it will start drawing for you. And you can drag out a line to create the first wall. Now you'll see it gives you a measurement here for the wall length. Now you don't need to be like millimeter accurate here, but do try to get it as close as you can as that will provide the best results later. So just going to go ahead and draw that point here and you'll basically just click at each corner of the room to add a new wall and you can add as many walls as you want. You do need at least three, three points to complete the loop, but other than that, there is no real requirements. Now don't worry if you have like an internal feature or wall or something like that, you can add those later. We are just defining the outer walls of the room for now. Don't worry if you get a little squint, you can grab the corners of the walls and then you can kind of snap them back to straight again. And you can also change the snap points in the bottom left. Once you've got the basic shape up, you can go ahead and hit next. And then it's gonna ask you to add some doors to the room. And that's for an exciting feature that you'll see later. So go ahead and click on add door and then click on whichever wall has your door on it and you can then use the slider here to position it in the right place along the wall, and then you can change the hinge side and the swing side. If you have more than one door, you can go ahead and add those two. Once you're happy, press next to proceed, and then we get to add some furniture. Now, I've made a lot of basic stuff like beds and sofas and chairs and side units and desks and rugs for now, but hopefully we can massively expand the furniture catalog in the future. And I've made it kind of modular, so I would love it if some of you want to contribute some furniture to this, that would be awesome. And you can even import your own furniture later on in the settings. Anyway, go ahead and place some furniture and you will see that I've given things mostly accurate dimensions. And that's important for getting the accuracy of the room right. Now each of the grid boxes you see are a one by one meter grid. And you'll see if I place a bed, for example, that's two meters long, it takes up exactly two squares. So everything should kind of be to scale, which is really gonna help us with zones later. So place your furniture and build up your room and you can drag things around and rotate them. And if the sizes of the things you want aren't quite right, you can make them larger or smaller. You've even got a couple of rug designs in here. They don't really do anything except add a nice bit of color, so I did want to add them. I think they're a nice little touch. On the next stage, it's gonna ask you to place your device in the room. Now this is really cool because you can actually get an idea of what the coverage is going to be like for the room that you're placing it in. And because we drew everything kind of dimensionally accurate, you can get a really good idea of what the coverage will look like 
because it's using the actual device capabilities to represent its coverage. So the field of view as well as the max distance are all right. And I think that is super cool because it's gonna help beginners to uh, understand how it's going to work in the space that you've got it in. And you'll see that on a really large room, how different the coverage is with a light compared to an EP1, for example. So place your device wherever you have it in the room. And it's important to use the rotation slider up here to orientate the device however you actually have it in the space. Again, going to show you the best coverage and the details later. So place your device wherever you have it in the room. The next screen is where it gets super exciting and a feature a lot of you have been asking for. I recommend updating your Everything Presence Lite to the latest version before you run through this wizard because if you do, it's gonna pop up and ask if you want to use polygon zones. Now before, the light used to have just rectangular zones only, and they were defined with one entity handling each corner of the rectangle. But now this allows you to draw polygon zones and create basically any shape you want to suit your room instead of being constrained by rectangles. This is such a cool feature, and again, one loads of you requested. I could just never quite figure out how to do it before. So if you say yes, and you want to use polygon zones, what's gonna happen is it's going to convert your existing zones into polygon zones and show them on the canvas. And you will see that each zone has a little white circle and then a transparent circle. The white circles can be dragged around to change the shape. And then if you click on a transparent circle, it will add a new point to the zone, which again can be then rearranged. Now, if you switch back and forth between polygon and regular zones for now, your old zones will still be stored there. And so it's up to you which you want to use. You can switch back and forth between regular zones and polygon zones. In the future, we might get rid of regular zones just to cut down on the number of entities. But for now, they are both there. Now, if you want to add more zones in the future, don't worry, you can do that in just a second. Go ahead and hit next, and then we are done for the setup. And if you made changes to the zones, then make sure and press push zones to devices, which will actually push them to the device, and then we can finish. And it's gonna take us over to the live dashboard. Now, the live dashboard is going to show you your room as you've drawn it, and you can see it tracking in real time around, which is really cool. We are gonna come back to this in just a second, but first I want to show you the room builder and the zone editor. So head over to the menu and then into room builder now, and this is where you come if you want to make adjustments to the room. You can click on the walls and edit the dimensions or move them. You can add more walls, you can add more furniture or rearrange furniture and so on. You can also move the devices around in this mode too if you want to kind of change its placement after the fact. If you come into the settings here, you can also toggle off the different layers here for visibility. And you can also do one of my favorite features, which is add a floor covering, which adds a nice little bit of color and I think completes the look of the room. Now these are admittedly basic and do need a bit of work to add more types and make them a bit nicer. But for now, I do like the gray carpet one myself. Once you've made the changes in here, you want to hit, just hit save and that's it now stored. Head over to zone editor now and then click to view the zones in the sidebar. And we've got a glimpse at another brand new feature that's really exciting called entry zones. These are a new type of zone that is a game changer for improving static presence performance. Depending on where you use the Everything Presence light, if you sat really still for ages, you may have seen it lose tracking for a moment because it doesn't have any adjustable sensitivity controls. Now, a tiny movement would kick it back into detecting again, but that's annoying, right? Because some of your automations may have turned off. So what I've added here is an entry zone and combined it with another feature called assumed presence. So what happens if you enable assumed presence mode is if it loses track of you for a moment, it basically looks to see if you have ever walked through the entry zones in the time before it lost you. And if you did, then it knows that you did indeed leave the room. And if you didn't, it knows that you are still in the room 
And so at that point, it will enter assumed presence mode and it will keep your zone active and your tracking target active at the last known position so that all of your automations keep working exactly as if it was tracking you right there. You'll also see a timer countdown for how long it's got left before it properly clears. And this is a configurable option that you can do in the settings. As soon as it picks you up again, it will exit assumed presence right away and track you as normal again. This should also work for multiple targets at one time, but I haven't managed to test it as much, so feedback is welcome on that. Assumed presence mode, I think, is a real game changer for a lot of people. And basically what you want to do is to take a zone or an entry zone and then draw it over the doorways that you placed earlier. So you can see why setting the doorways in the right place and having the walls all dimensionally accurate was super important. Although you can come in and move the doors after the fact inside of the room builder. Finally, back on the live dashboard, there is yet more features here. So obviously this shows you the real time tracking of targets and it will display multiple targets at one time. In the top right hand corner, there is this nice pane which shows you the status of all of your sensors, if presence is detected, how many targets there are and which zone type you are using. And then it's got a legend of each zone type. If you click the little plus button, it's got more real time tracking information. It will show you the assumed presence status if it's active and it will show you if a target is in a zone or not currently. Down at the bottom, if you click the device button, that's going to bring up all of the additional settings for your device so that you can basically configure everything you need here without needing to jump back into Home Assistant. And then if you jump over into the display options, you can toggle off the different device capabilities like max range and device max. Max range is what you currently have the maximum distance set to and device max is the maximum theoretical possible distance for this device. Clip radar overlay uh, is pretty self-explanatory once you try it. And finally, a very exciting feature is heat maps. If you turn this on, it will take a second to load and then it's going to show you a heat map of where you spend most time active in the room. And you can change the time period with the drop down and with the slider, you can control the threshold and filter out some of the noise or the less present areas. If you close down the display settings, you can see that we now have this new panel appeared on the right hand side. And this panel shows your most active zones and is actually really useful for making, your zone, making sure that your zones are dialed in correctly. Then under the hourly activity, this shows you which hours you are most active in and have the most tracking activity in. And you can see that my late nights have been getting longer and longer as I've been trying to get this feature done. But this basically allows you to make sure that your zones are set up correctly and it's some interesting data to see where you are spending the most time. Ideally, if you have everything dialed in properly, you would see very high percentages on all of the zones and as little as possible in a not zone or not inside of a zone because that means that you've basically got everything set up the way that it should be. Finally, the last feature here is record mode. Basically, you can start a recording, walk around the space if you want to make sure tracking is working or if you have your dimension set correctly and it will show you the exact trail of where you walked and then you can stop it and use that to make any adjustments to your automations. EP1 owners will be really happy to know that the EP1 is now supported here too. Of course, zones aren't supported because the sensor doesn't support tracking. It's designed for a different purpose, but still there is some useful tuning information in here, especially because you can see the difference between trigger distances, max distances, as well as change the sensitivities and really dial it in for your room. I also added CO2 status if you have the CO2 module along with some alerts and it gives you some recommendations for settings if you don't have optimal settings for the room that you have designed. So it kind of works out the size of your room and uh, kind of gives you the optimal settings. 
There's also some cool stats and activity logs to, again, just provide a full picture of the room as best as we can. So that is the huge update of releasing today for its Zone Configurator, plus those really powerful new features for Everything Presence Lite. And I tell you, it is so cool to still be pushing these devices constantly and continuously making them better, which you don't see often. Most manufacturers just release devices and then they have a couple of bug fixes and what have you. But it's so cool to be pushing these devices as far as they can go and just trying to make them better. As I mentioned, we are having a huge Black Friday sale right now. We have both EP1 and EPL at their lowest ever prices, literally. So now is a great time to jump on that. Plus lowest ever prices on loads of other devices on the shop. So do take advantage of that, especially with this new update. And oh, we are running a giveaway actually for either a ZWA2 or a ZBT2. So every order gets an entry into the giveaway for one of those. Some of you eagle-eyed viewers may have spotted a couple of devices in the beginning. Well, you are not going to want to miss the next week. That's all I've got to say about that. Be hyped because it is incredible. I've got so many cool features planned for Zone Configurator after this, and I would really love for you guys to get involved either with feedback or submitting new floor patterns or furniture, or if you're a developer and then new features would be awesome. There is tons of new things I want to add to this, and I think this is really the tip of the iceberg for this new tool. It's got loads of potential uh, in its current form right now. I'd love to hear what you guys think down in the comments below. As always, this was a ton of work, a complete rewrite from scratch. I haven't even been to sleep yet, so looking forward to a little rest after this. Oh, if you're waiting for an update on Highfield House, it's definitely coming soon. We are working hard on that. And all of your support over on the shop is going to massively help out with the funds for that project. So thank you so much for all of your continued support. And thank you for all of the comments on that video. The response was just absolutely insanely overwhelming and it makes me anxious, but excited to get going with that really soon. That's gonna about do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.